Hello, hello. Before starting this tutorial, I want to show you the end result of what this tutorial will be about. So we have a tree view where we can select some different types of items, and then at the bottom we have a properties grid using QData Widget Mapper to map the data of our model's items to certain widgets. Then, and then we can choose to edit them and switch selections and back, and it will still remember what it had. So we have a light here with light intensity, near range, far range and cast shadows. It has a readable type, we can't actually edit it, and then the name of it. We can rename it in this field, we can also rename it up here, and then it would update automatically back in the properties editor. All this done with the QModel Wii framework. Anyhow, enjoy this tutorial and I hope you like it. Today's goal is to understand and work with the QData Widget Mapper class. But before talking about it, and the theory behind it, I'll show a few more examples with proxy models, and how we could for example use a different data to filter or sort with, etc. Right now, filtering and sorting uses the name of our node class. What if we wanted to use the type info attribute of our node class for sorting and filtering? Well, we can do that. If we check the Qt documentation about the QSort filter proxy model, we see that there are two properties that interest us set filter role and set sort role. If we don't explicitly set these, they default to the display role. And if you remember, we return the name of the node for the display role for column 0 inside our data method. But let's say that we wish to filter and sort with the type info, but we still want to maintain that the view should only display the name, basically keeping the column count at 1 instead of 2. We can do so by setting the filter role and sort role to something else. The Qt documentation says that the first role that can be used for the application specific purposes is the constant 32 and is defined for us as Qt user role. The first role that can be used for application specific purposes. Let's create two new roles inside our scene graph model. They're not going to be member variables, but static variables kinda. So let's scroll up and create two new roles. Sort role should be Qt core Qt. Remember user role was the first application specific role. Let's create another role called filter role and increment the user role by one. Now that we have our roles, we can set them on our proxy model. Scroll down and let's do that. Self proxy model set sort role to scene graph model sort role and let's also set the filter role set filter role to scene graph model filter role now finally in the data method we need to return the appropriate data that we wish to sort and filter with so go up to the scene graph model and then get go to the data method and at the bottom if role equals scene graph model sort role we return the type info so node type info we wish to return the same thing for the filter role but you might wish to return something else all right so if role is sort role or filter role, we return our type info. From now on, the type info will be used for both sorting and filtering our data. Even if we name our stuff in alphabetic order, it's not going to care about the name, names. And I'm going to show you that I've already named them in alphabetic order in the root node. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Let's run this and try it. I'm just going to set the column count back to 2 so we can indeed see that it sorts and filters on type. So go up to column count and set it to 2. Because for column count 1, 
or for column one we return the type info and we wish to see if it indeed sorts per type and not per name run it and sort you see that it sorts with the type and not the name so we we'll implemented it successfully let's try filtering I'll write C it only shows camera or cameras even if the name is F and I and that's because we filter on the type info by using our own custom roles. Remember when I said that the view actually calls the data method when it requests when it requests data to display on the view depending on the role. The view doesn't know about our roles and will never call them. Since the data method is a public method, anything can call it. That's how the proxy model handles handles stuff because we set the sort and filter roles to something custom so when the proxy model asks for the data by calling the data method it passes our sort role and filter role that we provided hence why it works gonna change back to column count to 1 as I really don't need to show the type in a second column think of the rows and the columns of a model as a grid of data you don't have to show them in a view, it's completely fine to have data in the column 10 and not displaying it. You can also set a different column for the filter role by calling set filter key column. Let's go down to the window class and write this. Cell proxy model set filter key column. By default it's zero. This might be very useful in combination with our custom role we could return type info for column 0 and name for column 1 and have a dynamic solution in our program so the user can choose what he wants to filter with at runtime. Sorting is already per column by default. Now that we have dwelled a little bit deeper about the properties of the QSort filter proxy model, it's time to move on to the QData widget mapper. Before we start implementing our small property grids using QData widget mapper class, we have to create them in the designer. It's nice to do something creative now and then. Let's fire up the designer. Okay, so we have four nodes and we need to create four widgets. Let's start with the widget for our node class. Our node class has two properties. Those are name and type info. The name should be editable while the type info should only be readable. Both of them can be displayed in a line edit. So let's quickly make a widget that fits our needs. Create a new widget and place two labels and two line edits in it. Line edit 1, line edit 2, label 1 and label 2. Align them the way you wish. I will use two horizontal layouts horizontal layout 1, horizontal layout 2 and place these inside and finally wrap this up in a vertical layout and scale down the widget. Okay, let's also rename the labels so that they describe each property correctly. The first one is going to be the name and the second one is going to be our type info. I'm going to give the labels a minimum size of 75 minimum size 75 in width so we get a nice spacing and let's also rename our objects that will be used in our Python code so expand this first one is going to be called UI name and the second one is going to be called UI type and finally we said that the type info should be readable so select it scroll down to the bottom at this, at this property grid and click read only. This makes sure that we can't type in this field, it can only display data. We're done now, save it at a desired location. Let's quickly handle the rest of the widgets for light, camera and transform. We haven't created the properties for those yet, but that's fine, we can do that later. Starting with light, I want it to have four properties. So create a widget, the properties are going to be light intensity, near range, far range, and cast shadows. 
all of them will use a double spin box except the, sha the cast shadows property that's a boolean value so it's gonna use a checkbox so let's copy a layout from here and paste it in our widget we need four more of those remove all the line edits and as I said before the properties are light intensity the second one is near range third is far range and finally we have the cast shadows property shadows align it vertically and create the editors so three double spin boxes which work on floating point values and double point double precision values and there we have our three double spin boxes and finally we need a checkbox for our cast shadows property so let's drag and drop a checkbox and remove the text of it let's make the accessing easier in our python code so rename the objects so the first one is going to be UI light intensity second one is going to be UI near third one is going to be UI far and last one is going to be UI cost or UI shadows and light is done let's create camera widget scale it down copy a layout if I can select it there we go we need two of those and our camera is gonna have two attributes as I said before those are gonna be motion blur and shake intensity shake intensity it's gonna use a double spin box just like the light intensity val light intensity editor let's rename the object also to UI shake intensity and the first property is motion blur and that's gonna use a checkbox because it's a boolean value and let's remove the text and rename the object to UI motion blur and finally we have our transform node which is gonna use a single property called position and it's gonna use X Y and Z coordinates so copy uh, layout again align it horizontally let's do it for this widget as well and scale it down and rename this label to position place three more double spin boxes inside it and let's rename them to UI X, UI Y, and UI Z. And there we go, we have our editors now. So let's start coding with the QData widget mapper.